given the function g of x equals x squared plus 2x. Evaluate g of x minus g of a divided by x minus a, where x cannot equal a. All right, uh, so in this particular context, uh, what we need to do is we need to realize that they gave us a function of x. And what they're asking us, and that's the g function, okay? And they're asking us to then take that function g of x and subtract it from the g function at the location of a, all right? So first thing is that I realize that this g of x is the same as this g of x, right? They're identical. So what that means is that whatever this thing is equal to, namely this, I can basically take this value and plug it on in for my g of x, right? I can basically take that in and plug it in for g of x, okay? Because they're equal to one another. So that's really the first thing I'm going to do, all right? Right after I just rewrite this on, uh, on out again. So this is going to be x minus a. So for g of x, I just realized that I can plug in this x squared plus 2x. So this is x squared plus 2x, okay? That's then going to be, and I'm going to plug in my parentheses, that's then minus g of a. Now, what is g of a? Well, remember, this goes back to a prior concept. If you know g of x is equal to this, x squared plus 2x, oops, right, as the problem had indicated, then all I need to do is evaluate this function at a. How do you do that? Oh, right, all we have to do is just simply substitute this a on in for everywhere I see x on the right-hand side, right? You're basically following these three steps at the bottom, okay? If you're a little unfamiliar with this technique, we've got tons of videos for you on evaluating functions at certain values, all right? Check them out. Um, so now what, all we need to do is plug in a where I see x. And that's it, right? That's a two, all right? And this is what g of a is equal to, oops. So all I'm going to do is now basically take this value right here, which is equal to g of a, and plug it on in for where I have my g of a value in the equation, okay? So I'm actually just going to erase this for now so I can plug in the value of, and I'm going to begin with parentheses, a squared plus 2a, okay? The reason why I use parentheses is because we're subtracting the entire function value of g of a, so I have to make sure that I subtract the entire value. And I can do that by placing in parentheses because the negative is then distributed right over the entire parentheses value. When in doubt, use parentheses. And this is all over x minus a, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look to see if I can simplify anything. Now the algebra here in terms of simplification is a little confusing. It's a little difficult to explain because some of the algebra patterns are, um, understood visually and uh, through through pattern recognition. So just bear with me on this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute the negative sign first, okay? So I realize I'm gonna break, I don't need the parentheses here anymore, so this is just x squared plus two x. Now I'm gonna distribute this negative sign to the negative a squared and then minus two a, okay? And this is all over x minus a. So now this is the point that it, it becomes a little creative and you gotta mesh a couple of concepts together. So I notice that I have x minus a in the bottom, all right? What now I'm thinking about is, can I, do I have any x minus a factors in the numerator, such that if I can factor out an x minus a, I can cancel this denominator? Now it might be possible, might not be possible, but that's my thought process, okay? I wanna see if I can factor any x minus a's out of the numerator. And once I start thinking about that, a little light bulb goes off and I start seeing a way I can arrange this such that I can factor out x minus a's. All right, so let me reorganize the numerator, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put x squared next to negative a squared, okay? I'm gonna do that at the top right. So this is now x squared minus a squared Okay, and then I'm gonna to put together the positive two x and the negative two a. So I'm going to say positive two x and negative two a. Now what I'm gonna do here, and you don't, you don't need this at all, you don't need parentheses, but I'm just going to dash a little parentheses because I wanna indicate how I'm viewing this at the moment. All right, I'm viewing this as like two binomials, okay? 
Don't forget this is all over x minus a. And now I'm trying to say to myself, all right, now that I reorganize this, is there any way I can find an x minus a factor in this binomial? And is there any way I can find an x minus a factor in this binomial? Okay, so the, for the first case, yes, I can, right? And here's the, here's the key, and this is the part that, the, this is part of the pattern recognition. This is why some things, and I'm actually gonna write this down on the memorize this section. You want to memorize this, that, and I'll give it to you in the general form, all right? Then anytime you have a plus b multiplied by a minus b, this will always simplify to a squared minus b squared, always, okay? It'll always, always simplify to that. That's because the middle terms, the when you take a and multiply it by negative b, and you add to that then a positive a b, when you do the middle terms there, they will cancel, right? If you were to FOIL this out, you would see that. So I know that if I can identify this value, this binomial, which I have here, right, just in different letters, but it's the same thing, I can take this binomial and rewrite it in this form. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So rewriting this would look just like this. So this would be x plus a times x minus a. Oh, whoops, got a little, a little excited there, a little trailed, trailed off there. Um, so here I see, oh, look at that, I got an x minus a. So that was my thought process. I'm recognizing patterns. Okay, that comes with practice. There's no shortcut there. All right, hard work. Plus now, I'm finding, is there anything I can factor out of this? Well, yeah, I do realize I have an X and I have an A here and they're subtracted, but what, what values are in common between those two? Oh, right, the value of two. And if I factor out the two, then I can get X minus A left. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, X minus A. You have now two terms with a common factor in each you can factor out these common factors, okay? That's what I'm going to do now. So when I now rewrite this, I'm gonna factor out my x minus a. And what's left then of the first term is x plus a. So I'm gonna write a little bracket. So this is just x plus a, right? I can put a little parenthesis around it if I want it. And then the term that's left in the second one is just gonna be a positive two. Okay? then divided by x minus a. Now the reason why I did this is because I realized that I have this common factor. And now since this common factor in the numerator is being multiplied uh, to this value, and this common is the only factor in the bottom, right? I can, these are essentially being divided by one another. So they cancel. And lo and behold, look what we're left with now. I'm gonna write the answer on the left-hand side. Okay, we are left with then x, plus a plus two. And there you go. That's the final answer. There's no, and you can rearrange this if you wanted two plus x plus a, I, you know, they're, they're all the same. I don't know, however you wanna, however you wanna organize that now is fine with me. Okay, these are all the same answer. But that's how you would do it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please subscribe and we'll see you in the next problem. Take care.